Good evening, one and all, and welcome to this spooky Saturday for our adventures into the paranormal. However, if we are to invite the spirits in, I will need you to relax and get comfortable as we embrace ourselves to let the darkness take control. Number 1. This incident happened in a flat when I was 6 or 7 years old. I remember this very clearly, still to this day, and it makes my spine shiver thinking about it. I had the largest bedroom in the flat. My mum had decorated the walls with pink and lavender paint, and cute little metallic swirls. I had bunk beds, glittery curtains in my window, charms, and glittery things hanging from the ceiling. Any young girl's dream. I remember getting into bed that night, and everything seemed normal at first. My room wasn't usually too dark because the moonlight shone through my window, through my glittery curtains, and trying to sleep for what seemed like a while. I don't know why, but I started to look around my room, particularly in the alcove area, in the dark corner. I couldn't focus my eyes properly for a while, but when I did, I noticed my girl's world's head, one of those plastic weird lady heads you do makeup and style her hair on, really stood out in the moonlight against the creepy dark corner. I remember going to lay back down, in my bed, but I had the urge to look back, and when I did, I was paralysed with fear. At first I thought I might be imagining it, because I had been staring at a plastic lady head, but I swear, I saw this dark woman-like outline standing right there, next to the head. It was a dark grey black mist, but in the shape of a woman. I slowly looked at her, or it, with its massive bulging eyes, scanning down, and saw that she had no feet. There was nothing there, no shadow, no feet, nothing. She, or it, was levitating about ten inches off the ground, and it seemed like she was moving towards me. I was absolutely terrified, and will always remember this, because of how cripplingly scary it was. I was in shock, and I quickly spun around in bed and curled into the fetal position, with my quilt tightly wrapped around me. I made sure the quilt was tightly containing my neck and head, and can I add that there were no labels or anything that could have emulated what happened next. I was shaking, and trying not to breathe loudly, when I felt something stand behind me, leaning over me. I closed my eyes and gripped the quilt tight, when all of a sudden, I felt a tickle on the back of my neck. You know the feeling you get when someone unexpectedly puts their cold fingers on the back of your neck? It started off like that, and became quickly more aggressive, tightening around the back of my neck, as if someone was trying to keep a hold of me. I was trying to scream, but no words came out. I was sweating and shaking, and my neck was getting worse. It was hurting. I tried screaming over and over, but all that came out were little squeaks. It was like gasping for air. I remember the moment when I was finally able to scream for my mother. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but it came out crackled, like a blood-curdling cry for help. She came running in, and as soon as she flung open the door, and that burst of light shone through the room, the whole thing stopped. My mum grabbed me out of bed and carried me to the front room cradling as I sobbed hysterically. To this day, she still believes me, and said that even though she has never personally experienced anything paranormal, there was no way I would lie about what I saw, nor my reaction. From then on, I slept in my mum's bed for a while, and we moved out shortly after. I'm grateful we haven't needed to go back since. Number 2 
So my mother bought a painting of a boy smoking a cigarette. It's not particularly riveting, but she felt she had to have it. Not long after, she gets pregnant with my brother. It was after he was born that things started to get a little odd. No one in my house smokes, and yet all of a sudden, if you go anywhere near the painting, all you can smell is cigarettes. Things start to go missing, and my mum can hear children laughing and running across the stairs. But when she goes to tell my siblings off for playing near the stairs, they're sound asleep. Perhaps the strangest part is that as my brother gets older, he resembles the boy in the painting even more. It's creepy. He hates the painting and feels like it's watching him. Then this one awful night, I would have been around four on my brother seven, we all went to sleep in the nursery, and I wake up in the middle of the night to these awful choking sounds, and I can smell cigarettes so strongly. My brother is blue in the face, wheezing and gasping, and I can hear laughing. I genuinely thought my brother was having a laughing fit. But it looked wrong, and I got scared. So I started yelling and screaming from my mother. The paramedics came, and it turned out that he had a severe asthmatic attack. So we needed to take him to the hospital for a few days. They immediately asked my mother who was smoking in the house, because the paramedics smelled cigarettes, and obviously they thought that that was what the trigger was for the asthma attack. We took the painting off the wall, and locked it away in the attic after that. For as long as I can remember, it'd been a joke that the boy in the painting is lighting one up, and whenever stuff would go missing, it was because he'd taken it. This was different, this was scary, and none of us wanted to go near it. Stuff still goes missing every couple of months, and my mother gives us the keys to unlock the attic, and retrieve anything that has somehow found its way up there. The footsteps on the stairs have stopped, although now, if you stay up late enough, you'll hear someone pacing above your head instead. Thinking about it, I still don't have a clue why we haven't gotten rid of the damn thing. Number 3 I was sleeping over at my friend's small apartment in the mid-80s. I was on the floor in a sleeping bag, between his bed and his little sister's bed. In the middle of the night, I woke up suddenly but not alarmed, just suddenly and very clearly wide awake. A quiet man's voice in my head said, You should get up and move. I don't even remember questioning it, or it seeming weird, so I just got up, over my bag to the foot of his bed, and then we slept back to back. Sometime later in the early morning, there was this huge crash that awoke us. We all sit up, alarmed. His cat had jumped up and somehow taken down a shelf holding this gigantic, wooden, 70s style stereo set. The kind with boxy wooden speakers, a turntable, cassette, an 8-track. Probably 60 to 80 pounds of total gear. It fell, maybe 4 feet, and landed right where my head would have been. Mike yelled my name and rolled over. Didn't see me down there and looked around all panicky. And of course, I was down by his feet. We just stared at a few seconds, and soaked in the implications. Number 4 Just a heads up, this next story is told from a religious point of view, so if you'd rather skip it, feel free to skip to the next story. I didn't believe in the paranormal, until after my mother died. I was with her every single day for the last two years of her life, as the cancer took over. We shared so much joy and laughter, even though we knew that she was going to die. This allowed us to talk a lot 
about death. I asked her to let me know that she was in heaven, and still around. I just didn't think it would really happen. The first thing that happened was electrical. I had an iPhone that bricked back in October. I took it to the Apple store twice and they told me it was no good. I was mad, because I've had iPhones since they were released, and never had one completely brick. I was also really upset, because it had videos from my mum's birthday and our family vacation. I didn't put it on the cloud, and regretted it more than you'll ever know. Anyway, I tossed the phone in my desk drawer, and brought a new one. Life went on, and I forgot about it. Well, the night of my mum's funeral, I was editing her video to play the next day, and I grew frustrated, because I didn't have many good times videos. At about 2am, my phone kept popping up with the little Apple messages that say, enter your Apple ID. I kept putting in my Apple ID, and it would pop up yet again. No lie, it did this about 10 times before suddenly, it all hit me. I literally said out loud, there is no way. As I walked into my home office, pulled open the drawer, and sure enough, that dang phone that bricked 7 months ago was now back and fully alive. So I was able to get the videos up and put them on the cloud, and to make her video beautiful. And to this day, that old phone still somehow works. That was just the beginning though. I was scared of birds and my mother knew this. My mother died in April. Well, a couple of weeks later, I refused to get out of bed because this woodpecker started pecking outside my window. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? It drove me crazy because every morning, that thing would start early and it wouldn't stop. Then, on Mother's Day, I kept hearing this knocking against my bedroom window. I look out, and all of a sudden, these little baby birds popped out of one of the flower pots. I don't like birds, but I could appreciate the fact that they were babies, and that it was Mother's Day. I can't explain it, but it made my day seeing new life and I just knew that in my heart they were meant for me. But that was barely the beginning. Since then, the same grey dove sits outside, literally every single day, as I walk the dogs. I travel to work and it never fails. I go outside for a run and there's one single dove sitting there. I've also had odd visitors. One Friday, when I was at my lowest point, finances were hard and I just had the desire to keep moving on. I felt everyone had disappeared now that she was gone. Anyway, the doorbell rang, and it was odd because the dogs never barked. When I opened the door, this maternal Hispanic woman was standing there with a man in a suit. The man said, We've come to tell you that we're really sorry that you lost your mum. The moment he said that sentence, tears came flowing down my face. I can't explain how much I needed someone to just acknowledge my pain. Anyway, he asked me if they could pray, and explained that the woman didn't speak English. It was the most incredible and surreal moment of my life. Afterwards, they handed me $400, and said that their son owed my dad money, and to give it to him. We were really struggling financially, so I knew my dad would be happy. When he got home, I gave him the money, and my dad looked at me as if I were a ghost. He said, No one owes me any money, and I don't know anyone by that family name. To this day, we have no idea who the strangers were, but from that moment on, our healing really started. Sometimes things happen where you just know there's a higher power orchestrating it all. It was so hard-headed, but I could no longer deny all of these occurrences. I also became really at peace and happy, and just got back to my normal self. It really sped up my healing, and I knew my mother was at peace, and that one day, I'd see her again. 
One other big moment was when I went to Estes Park, Colorado last month to hike alone. I was waiting for the shuttle, and there was this YMCA camp going on. I'm talking hundreds of kids everywhere, and I was in kind of a daze, and staring into space when this little girl comes up to me and says, God told me to bring you this letter. It was so unexpected. I was kind of like, eh? Then she said, can I read it to you first? First she read a scripture. The scripture said basically, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Then at the bottom of the note, said that I was loved and that I'm not alone. And now it's time for me to go live my life. I would never be able to put into words what this moment was like for me, and how surreal the entire thing was. No one knew I was in Estes Park, and there were literally hundreds of just random kids everywhere, and this random girl just popped over and happened to give me a note in scripture like that. She was 12, and told me she didn't understand it either. God just told her to write something down and give it to me. You see, this scripture is about a woman who bled for many years, and she touched Jesus and was healed. Why is this significant? Well, before my mum got breast cancer, I had blood cancer, and I battled for many years. Many of my symptoms have returned, and this weighed heavily over my heart. The fear of going through this battle all over again, but this time alone, grappled me. That note meant more to me than anything else I'd ever received. It gave me the courage to get my cancer scans because I trusted that my faith healed me, whether it was physically or spiritually. I've never felt more at peace than in that moment. Number 5 My first paranormal incident was apparently when I was around 4 years old. My mother told me this story, yet I have no recollection of it ever happening. So here it goes. My great grandmother had passed away, maybe a year or so before. We were very close, and I still have fond memories of her despite my age. I was young and called her Nan, which was not her real name. Her real name was Sheila, even though I didn't know it at the time. At such a young age, I had no way of knowing her real name, and I only found this out years later after my mother told me. Apparently, on the 5th of August, when I was around four, I came running up to my mother, who was in the kitchen. She leant down and asked me what was up, and according to her, I said, Sheila says, happy birthday, Rosie. My mother's name is Rosie. Today, the 5th of August, was her birthday, and my mother's mouth fell open with shock. She felt the hairs on the back of her neck stand on end, and got a sudden chill. Not only did I not know my great-grandmother's name, I didn't even know my mother's real name. And to be honest, I didn't even know it was her birthday either. Perhaps my great-grandmother had spoken to me, and told me to tell my mother. Or else, why else would I have said that? I still don't know to this day, and like I said, I have no recollection of it at all. Still quite creepy though. Number 6 This happened when I was 11. I'm 16 now. But remember it like it were yesterday. It was February, and it had snowed an awful lot. As I live in Sweden, it's quite normal for it to snow that much. I was awoken by my father starting his car. I looked at my alarm clock on the bedside counter, and it was 6.30am. So I decided to go to the kitchen. I saw my dad drive to work and thought to myself, I have about half an hour before my alarm rings, so I decided to go back. I left the kitchen, and was now on my way to the end of the hall, where my room was. 
while I felt a disgusting feeling of pure instinct. I turned to the door, and saw something I wish I'd never seen. I had not heard anything before I turned around, but at the door stood a long, dark shadow with a hat. I'm glad we had a blurry window at the door, because I didn't want to see what was outside. That thing must have been over two meters tall. Whatever it was, it knocked so hard that both the door and all the nearby windows shook. It said no words, but it was very tall. I panicked. I ran to the kitchen and picked up the phone and ran back to the hallway. I went down the stairs and phoned my mother, but she didn't answer. Now the tears ran like never before, and then I realised that my friend only lived 300 metres away, so I called her. Fortunately, she answered at that time in the morning, but I couldn't get a word out except that someone was outside. Her mother heard me and the sounds that that thing were making. She took the phone and said that they were on their way. She told me to go to the kitchen and look out the window so I can get someone's attention if they're there. I did that, but there was no one around so I ran back. But then something got even more scary. The shadow had now vanished without a trace, without a noise. It was simply gone. I went back to the kitchen and saw my friend in the car. So I opened the door and found no footsteps in the snow. My friend stayed with me a while. Her mother was driving around searching but she found nothing. I phoned my mum again and told her everything, and she was shocked, and told me to ask my dad if he'd seen something, which I did, but my dad hadn't. And the crazy thing was, the thing appeared about 10 seconds after my dad had left. And for all of those who are wondering, my dad starts his car and leaves via the side door. Number 7 I lost my mother at 16 years old, and I was so stifled in the room at the time she passed, like the room were at full capacity. The room was dark although the curtains were open, and it felt claustrophobic, not just to myself, but to the others in the room as well. As soon as my mum passed, the air lightened, the shadows dissipated, and the room was brighter again, despite the sadness of a few people who were in there. And this was just the beginning. From then, there was always a shadow in the corner of my eye, just sitting or standing somewhere in the room. Things move from one place to a completely different one, like keys, plates, clothes, and more than occasionally, these things are actually aimed at me or my husband. Lights turn on, and sometimes a new bulb will blow as soon as it's plugged in. The strangest thing so far is when styling my hair, an extra face smiles back at me from the mirror, whichever mirror I use. I should mention here that I'm also a drag queen, and when putting on makeup, the extra face isn't just there, it sits over mine. So for all the world, it's like I'm painting someone else's face. My husband pointed out that to him, it didn't look like I was doing my makeup at all. The face staring back at me is my mother's. Whilst this might not be the scariest story, it is a 100% true account of the things that happen to me on a daily basis some of which can be very creepy, especially now that they've been going on for over 12 and a half years. I haven't been able to see my full reflection in all that time. And can you imagine always seeing two faces in the mirror and never knowing how to make it stop? Or why it's there? And does it have anything to do with the shadows that echo from every room or wall and the objects which are hurtled around my flat? <laughs> 